Hello viewers, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I am going to attempt something uh, that I have not attempted to do uh, probably in 15 years, I think. And what I'm going to attempt to do is pull out this headliner that is falling down and is nasty. It has got some water stains on it. It's got tears in it. It's got fingerprints on it. It's gross. It's falling down everywhere and it needs to go away. So I'm actually going to attempt a, uh, a headliner replacement and repair on this uh, classic body style Chevrolet Silverado. This one's a 2007. Uh, I think the year range for this particular headliner type is 99, 06 or 07, something like that. Somewhere in that ballpark, early 2000s. So uh, what we're gonna need to start with here is I need to remove all the, uh, the items that bolt onto the roof on this truck. Uh, we gotta pull the pillars out, the A pillars up here. Uh, these are A pillars, that's the ones by the, uh, uh, by the windshield. Then you've got a B pillar behind your front door. And then if you have more than something behind your front door, then you have a C pillar and D pillar, et cetera, et cetera. So each pillar uh, is labeled A through whatever as they move back on the chassis, fun fact. Anyway, so what we need to do is disconnect our, uh, uh, our sun visors, console, the little speakers, the old crap handles like that one over there, all the side trim, including the pillar trim and then we need to make our way out back and probably lay the rear seats down because we'll need to pull back the trim uh, at this area as well. We're also going to have to remove all of the, uh, the door seals. I think we have to pull those out. Maybe we just need to pull them back some, but the door seals have to, have to be moved away. And uh, at some point I'll be able to dig this headliner out and we need to get it extracted without damaging the uh, fiberglass or the, the thick foam backing that's on it. So effectively what we're gonna do is pull this unit out. We're gonna strip away all the cloth. We're gonna get rid of all the foam, adhesive and sealant. See all that stuff right there? We're gonna scrape all that stuff off. Then I can break out a new piece of, uh, of cloth and I have some gray suede. It's gonna be like a really nice upgraded look for this. Uh, we have to break out the new cloth set the uh, the fiberglass mold uh, on some uh, like a table or a bench and spray some uh, some glue and curing agent or whatever on the uh, the fiberglass looking piece and then we can adhere the new material to the unit and then reinstall it so uh, like i said i don't know how this is going to work out i have not uh, performed this particular operation in a very long time and the last time i did it was on like a 89 s10 blazer so slightly different technology but uh i think i can manage so let's go ahead and get started i think the first thing i want to do uh, we're going to start from the front to the back so we're going to lose the pillars we're going to lose the visors and then we'll pull the, the console probably not in that order because i feel like i'm going to do the console first and then uh screwdriver and then we'll see what it's gonna take to get this unit removed. So let's start with our console here. I need to get this guy disconnected. There's one screw. There we go, right up there. We have one screw and there's a couple clips on this console and clearly there's a boatload of wires in there. Uh, that's kind of a side project going on. A lot of these are not connected. Uh, the only ones that's hooked up right now is gonna be the rear lights on the rear bumper. Uh, I've got an LED light bar up top and that's for my auxiliary fuel pump in the back for the transfer tank and then these two are unused at this current point in time but we'll figure out what to do with those so i realize that this is not a customer's vehicle so this is not an everyday type of repair that may be disinteresting to some of you and i hope it's not but the reality is is today we are closed it is the weekend and i am here at the shop because I wish to make some headway on this particular project. So we're gonna get this console popped out of here. One more connector. I know this looks like a mess. It's not that bad. This right here is a work in progress. I've, uh, I've integrated a, uh, what is that? A 12 pin connector to my lights and they're going to run a relay pack. It's gonna be out back in the toolbox to uh, support some electrical loads. Uh, a lot of these are not used and all this stuff is going to be torn away and removed and redone properly with uh, a very nice uh, set of wires and wiring harnesses that I made. So now that that elephant is out of the way, let's continue disassembly. We've got the, what do we got there? It looks like three screws for the visors. We're gonna pull those. Those are gonna be Torx, I think. And yeah, I can't see. I need my flashing light. What do we got here? 
Yeah, those are Torx 25s. To the toolbox we go. All right, so Torx bit coming in. I think I got a, it's a T20. I was wrong on the, uh, the 25. What we need to do here is just kind of pull back all of our plastics and whatnot. Drop all this stuff down. Now we need to make sure we hang on to all the hardware. So what I'm going to do is just take all these pieces and they're just gonna get kind of dropped right here in the center console. So if I leave everything in there, then I don't lose it and I know where it's at. Uh, that's, the, that's the case with the hardware especially. Just drop it all down inside and then it doesn't go anywhere. More Torxes is. Now, unfortunately, I am going to lose uh, some of my OE stickers in this little endeavor. Um, I'm gonna try to peel these off and save them. Maybe put a heat gun to it to soften up the, uh, the glue or whatever. I'll try to save them, and if they will adhere, I can put them on the new headliner later. Um, coincidentally, or incidentally rather, or additionally, one of those leaves, I'm also going to have to replace uh, both of the sun visors and probably that console plastic that we just took off because that's going to be a different color and I think it'll look gross to have gray and tan so I'm going to have to find a uh, an interior that is gray that matches properly that, and I'm thinking I'll have to get one like out of a uh, Cadillac Escalade or something like that but that'll be for later on right now I just want to get rid of this dangly nasty uh, gross looking headliner because it's the original and it's been falling down for a couple years and now it's getting really bad okay now I'll just take these little components here toss them up on the dash and we can then move over to the other side and uh, repeat procedure I really hope that this, uh, this little project is gonna work out because I'm gonna have to put a lot of effort into this. There's a reason that I, I don't engage in the headliners or headliner repair. It's just not my, not my wheelhouse, I guess. That was the wrong driver. And I'm not an upholstery guy. I'm a hammer. Because remember, everything is a hammer. <laughs> Here are you, a couple more of these guys. Yeah, one thing I also noticed about this truck is that it's not a huge deal. It's not really my, it's not a priority, but this one never came with uh, the lights and the flip up mirror things uh, for your, for the passengers and the driver for that matter. So if you want to uh, look in the vanity mirror, it doesn't have a light. And additionally, the driver's side, as you guys might've noticed, did not have a mirror. So when I go eBay shopping for some Escalade uh, sun visors, I'm gonna try to find the ones with the lighted mirrors in them. So basically creating an upgrade. Okay, those are out. Let's get this guy right y'all. Switching drivers, this one's the T20. Spin that off and then just set it aside. So now we can make an attempt here to pull the uh, A pillar cover. They're in with just little uh, like clips. Yeah, that's what I didn't want to happen. See that? I just broke it. It's a uh, fragile plastics. So unplug that tweeter. There are speakers. Little tweeters. Pocket driver for the win on the clip. You did just kind of press it down, pull that out, there we go. So that's the connector for the tweeter speaker that is here in, uh, in the pillar. Oh, well, that was weird. I just flipped this pillar over and a bunch of glass fell out. Look, it must have been from when I had my windshield replaced. It, it must have broken it and pieces fell in there. And yeah, here's a here's that little broken piece I just saw. Look at that. What that does is presses into these metal clips right here. And when you pull these pillars off, the clip thing is supposed to come out of the hole with it. And this one broke off the plastic. It happens all the time. That's the 
that's the scary part about interior stuff. Because now, the only real way to fix this is to replace it or engineer some other type of uh, fastening device. I'll have to figure that out. I'll probably just get one for the Escalade. Time to buy an entire interior, interior, minus the headliner, of course. Anyway, while we're here and while I've got the pocket driver, let's pop off the little covers here for the fasteners that go to the old crap handles without gouging them and breaking them. And no, this pocket screwdriver is not a proper trim tool. But it'll work. Oh, I didn't know that did that. Come out. Why? I figured I, I had to unscrew those. That's a that's a new one. Okay. Well that's loose. I'll have to figure out how to take that off. Oh I see. We disconnect the connectors from from in here. Let's see how that works right there. Hang on. Slide it. Do we slide it over? I don't know. Hmm. You know what? We'll just take these out and figure that out in a minute. Okay. All right, back at the B pillar, we need to pop these plastics loose. Let's just give it some tugs here. I can look back. Actually, we're gonna have to do this a different way. I don't wanna break any more clips, especially on these B pillars. We need to get behind them where we can pull it back like this. And we reach for these little plastic, or metal clips rather, like that one there. We have to pop that out with a trim tool because I think if we pull on it, uh, it's gonna fatigue the plastic and it'll break the uh, the plastic piece and I don't want to break it Okay, B pillar clip you guys See oh got the flashlight okay, You did see anyway, we go in there we Just kind of give some sideways pry action on that metal clip There she goes and it pops right out and we'll follow the Pillar all the way down. I mean I could probably leave that the way it is and just sneak it out, but I want to I want to remove it properly, or at least as much as possible. Need to move the seat back. Or maybe, yeah, back's not good. Let's go all the way forward and then we'll lean the seat up. Oh, hit you guys with the seat. Look, I have kids. We'll, we'll move the seat up and just keep uh, pulling this thing back. There we go, that's good. Um, looks like the floor trim is in the way. Let's get to that next show. Go around on this side here, grab that piece of floor trim, and pop that straight up. Um, I'm really sorry for the grossness on the floor here. This truck does work things and does not get detailed. So, yeah, she's full of dirt and yard clippings and shells and things of that nature. But it's uh, better than roaches and uh, french fries. So we'll go with that. It's better than roaches and french fries. Anyway, so we got the pillar out. Now I need to work on this oh crap handle, which is just some 10 mils right here. We'll pull this guy out and that'll give us an opportunity to come back here to our C pillar. Uh, once this guy's out, I think what I'll do is go to that side and just break all those loose. And then we can wiggle this headliner out, turn it, and then we'll pull it out, get it on the bench, strip it down, get rid of the foam, and uh, I'll see how good of a reupholstery guy I am. Tell you what, we'll see. We'll see how good of a reupholstery guy I am because I also have a, uh, a new carpet in there, but I don't know if I want to tear out like all the seats and, uh, ooh, look, a pretzel. Okay, it is gross in here. I don't know if I want to tear the seats out today or not. I mean, I can, I can leave the car parked here for a few days and just not drive this one. Uh, I could go that route, but I don't know. I don't know if that's the best idea, because I kind of need my truck sometimes. Here, let's pull the seat back and then fold the back down. Get rid of that. We can work on this back uh, back section here. Here, let's see what's under this side. Ah, it's a nightmare. Let's see, jumper box, socks, sheet metal shears, machine gun. This is broken, I don't need that anymore. And some license plates and some sheet metal shears. Okay, yeah, I need to get all this stuff out of here. This is embarrassing, I'll be right back. There, look at that, it's like it never happened. So now, we can get on with the program here. I'm gonna need a 10 millimeter for uh, that seat pillar, oh crap, handle. 
B pillar. B pillar. Climb on up in here real quick, like. Let's get these guys. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. Remember the song? There we go. Got rid of that guy. C pillar is next. We're just gonna get some uh, some good purchase on the real estate here. Give it some tugs. That one's hanging up some. Need the need the pry driver. I think. Actually, I need to pull off this back panel here because this panel is on top of the side panel. So let's pull this one out. Unclicks. That one's getting stuck. There we go. Cool. Came right out. Got her. And there are no broken clips on the back. It's nice. Ooh, good thing uh, we pulled that off. Look, I found some hidden screws back here. That would have been a broken panel for sure if I just tried to manhandle it out. Yeah, you can't unclip screws. Those have to... Uh, you gotta find them and remove them. Come here, screw. There we go. Let's try that again. Get a hold of her. Give it some tugs. There we go. We're becoming disconnected. Now I'm gonna have to probably disconnect the uh, seat belt. What are we stuck on down here? One more clip, maybe? Yeah, Una Moss. Come out of there, you. Yeah, seatbelt's got me. That's one side of this headliner disconnected. Let's uh, move over to the other side of the truck and we'll start working on those three pillars there and we'll try to pop this unit loose with uh, our little push pin, little clip uh, devices right there. And once all that stuff is free, this headliner uh, should just kind of fall down and then we can maneuver it on out. So let's move around and uh, get those other pillars disconnected. I keep seeing so many little things that need some attention. Uh, loose vents and just random stuff, dirt and places where I don't like it. So, uh, I mean, this project actually might turn into something uh, a little bit larger than what I'm what I'm anticipating. Yeah, see all these wires running up into here? This stuff is gonna go away and get reconfigured. I'm building a harness now that attaches uh, to this connector, which is gonna replace all this, uh, this nasty stuff over here. This is a result of adding one or two circuits at a time over the period of a couple years and then deleting a couple circuits at a time over one or two years and then it all just kind of hangs out there. So that's all going away. I know it's gross, but fear not, I'm, I'm better than that. Rephrase, my standard is higher than that. That's what we're gonna call it. I'm not better than that because nobody's better than anything, but I'm gonna consider, uh, consider it a higher standard of operation moving forward. That's what we'll call it, higher standards. Standards, you know what I'm talking about, those things that we are lacking these days. Standards, gotta have standards. Otherwise, there's no baseline for comparison without a standard to compare off of. We you know, that. sometimes I wonder if you guys are here to watch me work on stuff or listen to the nonsensical babblings that come out of the mouth. Maybe it's both. I mean, well, I don't know. Sometimes I listen to my own nonsensical babblings and I'm going, what was I talking about? So we have two pillars out. Let's get our uh, little floor plate. Look, a bee. Better than a roach. I'm gonna be embarrassed if I find a roach in here. Uh, and let me clarify, uh, we have palmetto bugs in Florida. They're, uh, oh, that's stuck pretty good. They're big, giant, nasty roach looking things that fly around and they like to run into you when you're not looking. Yeah, those ones, the palmetto roaches, those are just normal wildlife. Uh, the gross roaches that I'm referring to are the the uh, the infestation type that run around and they hide in your bathroom when you turn the light on. I'm talking about those. The gross roaches, the ones we don't want. Come out of there. Why? There, got it. And the clip survived. Oh yeah. 
Put that right up here. Next, what is this? That's gross. Paper, tape, might be some tape, whatever. It's all gonna get vacuumed out. Same story on our C-pillar cover. We've got two screws. Both of these are going in my cup holder where all the interior screws go. That's how you don't lose them. And then we'll pop the clips on this one, pull her out. There we go. That's two of those guys. Clip packaging. It's an easy one, I think. Yeah, a little hung up down there, but I'll get it. Trim tool coming in. And where's that clip? I see you. Push it back. I think I'm supposed to disconnect this piece of the seat belt first. Yeah, I should probably pull that off in a, in a moment and just pull the belt out because I have both of these C pillar pieces just kind of hanging out in here chilling. That's not really going to work. Not the best. All right, so looking up, we are reaching our home stretch section of the removal here. I need to next pop out these, uh, these plastic push clips here, and I cannot break them because I did not have the foresight to order replacements. So I've got to reuse these for the time being. I'm probably gonna break them. Ooh, nope, reusable, that one's good. Let's get that next one over there. Anyway, as I was saying, these are not gonna match the, uh, the color of the new headliner trim, so I will have to find new ones at some point. Up here in the front behind me, there's two more. Now these look like, uh, it looks like there's only four of these things in total. That one broke. Yeah, broke that one clean off. Yeah, there's only four in total. Now there's only three. It's true. Let's get that last one. I hope I don't break it because then there will only be two. And that may not be ideal. Oh, that one's good. Oh, that one's shorter than the rear ones. Maybe I did not break that one. Oh, there it is. Look, 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 look. I did not break it. Cool. That's the best. I thought I broke it off. Okay, this headliner's pretty much free and clear. The only thing holding it in is a uh, little light bar assemblies here. So let's, uh, let's back up some, get these light bar brackets out and then we'll start dropping this thing down. this one out there we go and then you guys come with me and let's pull our last light bar out of here yep and she's starting to fall down looks like just the velcro is holding it and the rear view mirror let's push that forward some she's falling down this thing's loose it's not much oh we have a wiring harness here look there's a harness built into that unit, and that seems to be running down. Yeah, it's glued on, so we have to detach it somewhere. Down here, maybe? It goes behind the dash. I think it's this connector. Probably runs down to the body control module. I didn't realize that. Okay. All right, so I skipped ahead some. Uh, I found that this cable does not want to come out. I've traced it all the way down uh, to this junction block down here. You yeah, wrapped down and plugged in. I unplugged it. And then I found that there's another wire, this guy right here, that's also attached to it. And this one appears to go to maybe one of the connectors at the instrument cluster, or perhaps it's for uh, like a temp sensor or something. Either way, I found a connector here. Uh, I don't know if I can get to that without popping out the instrument cluster. I yeah i can't get rid of it okay let's uh let me unscrew this cluster real quick we've got four more fasteners here uh, i know i skipped some of this uh basically i just pulled the bezel off set that aside and then i popped out uh that little panel there with the switches on it and found where the wire went to so i just need to get this cluster out disconnect that wire then i can pull this cable out from behind the dash here and then we can get this headliner out um i think what i'm gonna do Oh, gravity, camera gravity. I think what I'm gonna do here is get uh, get this headliner out, and what we will do is go ahead 
and prep it and then glue it and then get the new piece of upholstery on there, uh, then we need to let it dry. So while that's happening, I can come back into the cabin and we can do something about this gaggle of, uh, of wires that have accumulated over the years inside of this interior because I want to clean this up and get rid of it. Well, not, not get rid of the truck, but I just want to get rid of the, the nasty wires and make it legit because I need to run uh, many, many, many more circuits and I can't just continue adding a wire for each circuit that I need because that's just asinine and unacceptable, so we're not going to do that. Ding, 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 ding. My chime was chiming at me. One more right there. Let's go ahead and maneuver this unit out of this hole here. Get it disconnected. Looks like it's just the one wire. Oh. Now I'm not really concerned about the cable that goes to the cluster here, but I want to get the cluster just out of the way. We'll put this thing outside somewhere. Probably on the toolbox with the rest of the interior parts. This is why guys don't like interior work because it turns into, into this. It's a, it's a mess. Big old mess. Anyways, right here. What? Okay, so that connector I was so concerned about doesn't go anywhere. It's a, looks like it's just a dead plug. Yeah, look right here. See that guy? I wonder if that can be useful to me for something else. I wonder what it was for. There we go, pop that out. Now I'm hoping I can get this whole harness to come out of here without ruining something. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, that little hole right there. But I think we can make it if we have some patience. People think I don't have patience because I talk fast and move fast, but you know, I guess that's what happens when you're in the, in the public limelight, I guess, or whatever. You catch criticism for the opinions of others. One of those things. This is gonna be the hard part, getting those two big old connectors out through, uh, through this little slot up here. See that? There's really not much space there. Oh, here we go, if I push it forward. There we go. Ah, I got her now. Okay, so that's my two connecting connectors that go down to that fuse block down below. These are the last two connectors on this wire that is attached to the headliner. And I don't know what this does. When we put this back, I'm gonna put this connector like down here so I have access to it. Maybe I can use that for like a power output of some sort. I'm sure it goes somewhere. And if it does, I can use those wires for something, I suppose. Anyway, let's get this little gaggle of uh, wiring business untangled and we'll back this headliner out of the truck. That's good, that's good. These guys go up in the front, pull everything out from down here. Yeah, see what I was saying? I need to make a proper wiring harness. That's, I mean, we're getting there, but that's just not, not gonna, not gonna do it. All the, uh, all the Mr. Sparkies right now are going, why, what is this? That's horrible. Sorry, fellas, things happen. And we have one last connection to disconnect, and that's gonna be, uh, not that one. It's gonna be this guy in the back of the rear view mirror. Come on now. Got it. Sweet. That's good. Okay. Now, this thing's free. Kind of.
Okay. Whoa. We're getting somewhere. I uh, I had to unbolt this back seat and drag it halfway out. I should have unbolted this first. I did not think I had to do that. And I probably should have pulled that center console out. Uh, as you guys saw, I had to pull the seats out to get space to wiggle this thing out without damaging it. And now we're, we're almost kind of a third of the way out. Like I've got the thing diagonal through the back door. So I'm gonna run around to that other side there and finish uh, kind of maneuvering this thing out. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize I should have pulled the seats. Uh, I figured I could do it without, but I was wrong and now I know. Uh, regardless, it's still gonna come out and I have not ruined the uh, fiberglass on the thing. So we're good. Rolling. So now, I can just kind of walk it out real easy. Look at that. She comes right out. No problem. Okay, time for the fun part. Let's unupholster the upholstery. Man, look at the destruction I put on this thing just from touching it. Massive fingerprint action. Wow, it's way dirtier than I thought now that it's out of the car. Look at over here. This is the part that's been flopping around by the driver. That's, that's bad. This is filthy. This is horrible. Embarrassing even. Okay, well, what we need to do is peel away all the fabric and then we need to remove this foam. See this foam business right here? All that stuff has to go away. So we either have to figure out how to scrape it off, peel it off, burn it off, pry it off, or any of the above to make it not be there anymore. I lost the gloves, I need to let my hands dry out. Oh yeah, this thing. foam on the back side that will have to go away so we need to somehow scrape all that off of there because you can't put adhesive on that foam that will not work it'll just come right back off the foam was originally the backing to the piece of cloth and the cloth came off of the foam but uh, stayed on the headliner so we have multiple stages of disassembly we got my sticker that for later. And no, I um, I do not do this as part of the shop's uh, available services. I don't do this kind of work. There's too much risk here. For example, if you bend this too hard and crack the fiberglass, you've ruined the headliner. Because even if you reupholster it and put it back, it'll fall down and not the fiberglass, or not the, uh, the cloth part. So yeah, I just, I don't do, I don't do that kind of thing. It's not for me. So don't ask. There we go. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna strip away all this uh, foam business right here. Uh, this is not the right tool for this, but I think it'll work. I have a um, like a pinstripe or decal remover for paint. It's kind of like a, it's almost like wax, like a rubber or something. It, it's got the consistency and feel to of wax, but it's I think it's made of rubber. Anyway, it's just a, it's like an eraser. Uh, basically, I'm gonna take this guy on a drill and just run it over 
the foam and it should peel that foam off. Yeah, 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 look at that. It pulls it right off. It's like just aggressive enough to lose the foam and not aggressive enough to damage the layer under the foam. So we're just gonna take all this, uh, polish all this business off of this little guy right here. Um, this is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and perform this operation once again in super high speed lightning fast motion. So enjoy. blow some of this debris out of here. There's a lot of it. It's starting to pool up and I can't see what I'm trying to work on. Um, you might have noticed that I switched out to uh, like this wire wheel right here. Um, it's a lot more aggressive than the little uh, that whatever I called it earlier. That little rub excuse me that rubber wheel. A um, little bit more aggressive um, but not enough to actually pull away this uh, fiberglass layer so that's gonna work out just fine. Joe, I'm going to keep at it with this thing, and then uh, when it's done, we can get this thing uh, kind of blown off and cleaned a little bit better, and then we'll get the glue on there after we fit the, uh, the new headlighter piece. everybody it's clean it's been blown off I have all the foam removed so now we get to the part that uh, I guess we've all been waiting for including myself we're going to unbox the new headliner like I said it is suede I found it on eBay they said it matches and or uh, not matches but it's the right size it measured out so let's get this thing unrolled and then uh, Got her upside down here. Let's get her unrolled, kind of set up over top of this headliner and see how this is gonna fit. I think it's probably just the right size. Yeah, that looks really good. I like that suede. That's nice. Super nice. I hope the camera, oh, hope the camera does it justice, but that is actual suede. It's not blue suede, it's gray suede. By the way, it's better than uh, what we had, that's for certain. So, pull this back and make sure it's gonna meet the dimension requirements. Yep, see how it's got foam on the back just like what we took off? Yep. Right around the front. Now, up here on the front side, I'm gonna want a little bit of overlap to wrap it around, like so. I think this is gonna fit just fine here. Yeah, they didn't leave me much extra. Look at that. It's a. 
we're right on the limit. I guess that's how it is though. Uh, the real question is, is which direction do I want my suede to flow? I want it to be combed backwards, yeah. See, if I go this way, it ruffles it, and if I go that way, it smooths it. And since uh, we're always moving forward, it should be ruffling back, so I have this flipped around. So let's give it a, a 180 real quick. We'll flip it, recenter it, and then um, we'll start the gluing process. I know it's stupid and a little detail, but it matters. So if we comb it back from the front side, that's going to be the smooth way that it rolls or that it folds. And if uh, back to front, that ruffles it. So it's now pointed in the proper direction. So the way I plan to secure this while we set up the glue is with some uh, little paper clip devices. You guys see those things? Very common stuff. Find them at office supply. What we're going to do, we're going to leave enough here to get a good wrap around on uh, on this guy we're gonna clip one of these on right there on the edge and then we can go and pull it tight we can pull it tight in the left and pull it tight in the right and then uh, we can flip it roll it up and then start applying the glue from the underside so I'm thinking we've got it all pretty much in a decent position here it covers each edge we're a little scarce on material in this back corner, but I can probably kind of tug it and get it lined up a little better. Let's try it like that. So what I'm going to do is since that uh, this is all looking fairly decent, we're going to unclip it real fast, we'll save those clips for later, and I'm going to start gluing this, and I'm going to do it from the side. So we're going to start actually from the center. We're going to start from the center. We're going to glue it like right around here in this area. And the reason being is there's a lot of sections that kind of dip in and that there's some uh, some contours and some shape to this. And I don't want to start from the front and start trying to pull tight and then end up with wrinkles. So we're going to start from the center and work our way out around. Uh, I don't know if that's the right way to do it. I'm sure the upholstery gentleman out there uh, will let me know. Um, but that's the way I'm going to do it. And that's how I feel comfortable with doing this. So right here, that's our side. That's our front. That's our back. And that's the other side there, and that's how we're gonna we're gonna begin this process. Okay, take our cloth, fold it back, and right here, that's uh, that's our center of the cabin. This area right here, that's right above the head. Take this guy and make sure there's no wrinkles in uh, in the material here. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start applying some uh, some glue to uh, to both surfaces. Yeah, but you didn't see that coming, did you? Now the real critical part here is to not get this glue on my gloves because if I go and touch the other side of this, it's gonna deposit glue on the finished side of this material and it will ruin the material and that would really, really wreck my day. And according to the destructions, we shake the can, we make sure the area is clean and dry and free from contaminants and things of that nature. Uh, hold it six to eight inches away from the work. Apply multiple coats in different directions for each time you put a coat on. Uh, allow it to dry for five minutes or until tacky before setting. And we're supposed to press both surfaces together with uniform pressure, eliminating air pockets. The bond should be made within 30 minutes of applying the, uh, the, 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 the glue and full cure is achieved within 24 hours. For best results, use a, a thin coat on both surfaces. So that's gonna be the, uh, the idea here. So let's see how this stuff works out. Take a roll of towels and make sure I have no glue on my trigger finger here. Wipe myself off really good, that's all right. Now, I'm gonna take this fabric, starting with the, uh, 
the flat part on the inside, we're gonna roll it out and start to make contact here. I think I'm doing a good job, I think. Don't know, never done this before. But I think I'm doing a good job. And if I think I am, then I must be. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. so good I think what you guys think is this gonna work okay let's move around over here towards the front side and let us prep another area for adhesive so our adhesive seems to be stopping right right here so what I want to do is we're gonna put some glue right here along this area the front and maybe right here and then we can kind of finish off this section here. So, shake up our can again. Get some glue going up. Oh, hit you guys with some glue. That looks good. Keep at it a little bit. back right here too much glue but that's what I'm using okay towel application again it's been a couple minutes this has started to set up some so go ahead and hold our cloth back and make contact moving forward Okay. Is this gonna work? I really hope this works. One thing that can happen is if you don't let that glue set up some, it can actually soak through your foam and you'll get glue on your upholstery. and it'll ruin the upholstery. So always let your glue set up as per the directions. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, paper clip right here just to, just to secure the front of that and get a good bond going with the fiberglass. Actually, you know, we can do a couple of them in this spot. It's probably overkill, but I like overkill. Okay, let us continue. We're gonna fold her back one more time. Going all the way to our, uh, our glue line, which is right, right in here. And we're gonna do this in quadrants. So let's apply some glue here, and then we'll apply it here. 
and then get it set up. All right, here it comes. This is where we start to get kind of serious about this. We're applying this, uh, this adhesive to a lot of surface area. I took out that little speaker looking guy that was there. Did that when y'all weren't looking. Right along those edges, nice and stick like. Bunch of it up here on the front and on my shoe. Get it. Ooh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. The more of this gets, uh, the more I complete, the more nervous I'm gonna be because one error and it will cause it to be ruined. Anyway, I'm reaching down behind this and kind of flattening the material out as we go along. Get another re-wipe, make sure I didn't pick up any glue. Reaching behind. working. Totally working. I'm not going to say anything too soon. No, no, no. I know better. Like, look, I got a wrinkle right here happening. No wrinkles. Nope, nope, nope. Let's just smooth that out real nice like. There's another wrinkle showing up. Ah! No! I ruined it. I think I'm all right. I got it. It's evened out. It's not the greatest. There's a bit of a wrinkle there, but I'll live with that. I have no choice. Okay, crisis averted. Unbelievable. Let's go around the rest of the contours here. Make sure we get good contact everywhere. We need one paper clip on the corner right here, right there to keep this from relaxing.
Okay, uh, let's move on to the second quadrant here. We're, uh, uh oh, I might have glued myself into kind of a corner or a hole or a problem here. I put too much glue here and too much glue here, so I gotta I'll have to just get under there, make sure I get the glue in there nice and deep. It wasn't exactly ideal. Uh, like I said though, I haven't done something like this in a long, 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 long time, and this is not my my skill set here so bear with me on how bad of a job I'm doing and make sure we get all that glue deep on in there as far as I can because that's a crack and we're gonna stop at this boundary where this corner is or the, the edge rather and I'm gonna need to go get more glue also I'm running low take it all the way to the edge that in there heavy all right sit here and hold this for a couple minutes oh grab a toss Just pull this back and let it hang on to itself there. Stay. A little more glue right up in there. Okay. X amount of moments has passed. Let's uh, let's set this down. And once we set this uh, this corner right here, I'm gonna walk away. And we're gonna go to the store real quick. I'll probably leave you guys here to watch this. And I'm gonna go to the store and get more glue. I thought I was only gonna need one can, but it turns out that's not the uh, situation. Here we go. There's the contour right there. Push that down. Beautiful. And that's the glue line right about here. Nice. And then here on the edge, there is glue on the back side. We're just gonna kind of roll that around and let whatever glue on the back side it here as it sees fit and we can go back and flip this over and touch it up some later trim everything off there we go very good
progressed to the stage of I need to trim back uh, all my excess and get the final uh, final bit of glue under there to kind of lock this stuff down. I've been using the clips to do it and the stuff is folding in around the lip very well. So I want to maintain its ability to, uh, to wrap around before it adheres. That way it stays tight even if the glue lets go in the future a little bit. See right here, we got to get in here and then pull this back. And what I'll use is a couple clips to keep some pressure on that so the glue sets up really nice. Let's get in there some. This is the detail work here. See that? Pull that around. And then get one of these clips in there to hang on to it. Keep it tight. Another one right there. Wrap that one around, tuck it in. There we go. I think that's going very, very well. I like it. All right, folks, we're entering some home stretch territory here. This thing is on and it's glued down. There's no glue that has soaked through. The suede is in good condition. There's very minimal blemishes. There are a couple of places where I let the glue get a little too thick, like right there, maybe right there. A couple spots that aren't exactly the best, but I mean, hey man, for what it is, I think we're good. Um, now I, I need to just uh, grab a razor blade and start cutting holes in the thing because I need to make the uh, the holes for all the uh, the other equipment. So I think we're gonna find the corners here, corner, 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 and we'll cut an X in this uh, in this area here, and that's gonna be for our center console or overhead center console rather. So the way I wish to go about this is well, just how I described. We'll cut an X into it. We give ourselves some flaps. Uh, let's see, that's enough to fold over and glue on. We can cut that section off. See that? And then here's our other corner right here. I'm gonna cut from that corner. There we go. And we can cut it, uh, we'll give it about three quarters of an inch away from the edge here. If we cut too long, that's fine because we can always cut it again. But if I cut it too short, it may not be fine because it may want to pull back and away from uh, from the edge there. There we go. And here's our corner right there. Poke it, slice it, dice it. Ginsu. And there's our edge. So we'll cut her right about here. So what I can do is we can flip this over and uh, we can secure it from the back side with a little bit more glue. And I hope it doesn't take much. Oh, I cut that one too far. That's fine though, because the console goes here. So we're still good. Anyway, as I was saying, that's, I hope I don't need much glue because I am running a little low on the supply. That's good. There are a few other holes that need punched in this, like the spot for the, the mirrors, or the, uh, uh, what you call them, the visors rather. So you have the visors, then the hook for the visor, that's right here. I'm gonna cut those out once this thing is up into the cabin. Yeah, there's the hole right there. Yeah, I'll cut those out later. I'm gonna leave those alone for now. So let's rough out one more, uh, one more of those cutouts. It's gonna be right here, I think, for the dome light. There's the two corners, two corners. Good. I'll trim this one out later. I'm just gonna kind of fold it in, leave that alone. There's still some glue on the back side of, uh, of the headliner there, so that actually might just adhere itself 
and may not require further attention. We'll see. I'll leave that one alone for now. I think that's all the holes that this thing needs to have. Let's, uh, let's pick it up and take a peek at the back side real fast. <laughs> I think, yeah, that looks like pretty much, I think, all we need here. Need to cut that piece back a little bit. There. There's a hole here, hole here, and then two more in the back for the push clips. I do need to, uh, I do need to punch those holes out, or at least mark them with like a sharpie. I think I'll do that. Yeah, let's take a. Let's take a permanent marker to the brand new headliner. All right, there's a hole, there's a hole. So coming around here. There's one of them. Other one right there. Spinning this thing around to the back side. There should be two more holes for those little pins. And there's one right there. And I can feel it right right here. So we'll mark that one. And then the other should be all right right here. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it right there. Mark it right there. Good. So now all the holes for our little uh little push clip deals. Those are marked, so once this thing is in chassis, or in the cab rather, we can uh, we can get that thing installed properly. So this is roughly the finalized product. Um, I'm gonna flip her over and just kind of glue down some of these edge pieces and get them secured with the clips and whatnot. And then I need to uh, let this thing cure up. Um, I think it's uh, 24 hours is for the ideal cure that is dirt. Oh no, oh no, 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 we're not doing that. Goodbye, dirt. Okay, so since we have a 24 hour cure limit on this thing, I've decided to not try to jam it back into the cabin of the truck. Um, additionally, the cabin of this truck is absolutely 100% destroyed now. I need to clean it out and get all this crap out of here and Seeing as how I had to pull the seats and get those dis disconnected, um, the only thing stopping me from changing out the carpet, which I do actually have a carpet back in the box over there, the only thing stopping me from changing out this carpet is uh, is the center console. So I, I didn't intend for this to go this way this time around. So I think what I'm going to have to do is come back tomorrow and uh, and pull this console and then tear this carpet out. We had it's, it, it just has to happen this way. It's taken too long. So having said all that, since it is late, the sun's starting to go down over yonder, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, close this out and make it a part two. So uh, I will be back uh, in the morning to finish uh, disassembling the truck and clean all this nonsense out of here, get rid of all the crap on the floor and the wrappers and the dirt and the leaves and the bugs and uh, whatever else is there. And we're gonna tear all this stuff out and the tools, of course. And uh, I'm gonna figure out how to get this back seat out. It's, this thing's a serious bear. It's heavier than I thought it was. I actually may have to pull it out through the front seats, uh, but we're gonna find that out tomorrow. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and consider this video a part one video, and then the part two video can show up um, after I come back to work to, uh, to finish disassembling this. I really wish I had a Cadillac dash because I'd go ahead and pull the dash out while I'm here. So it appears I'm doing a full on interior restoration at this point. Um, let me know what you guys think about this project uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, a lot of you guys have known that I've been kind of rebuilding this uh, Silverado for the past couple of years. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, I've been rebuilding this Silverado for the past couple of years. So tell me what you think about this thing also in the comments uh, down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. Thank you guys for watching. Certainly appreciate you being here all the way to the end. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. I'm tired. I'm closing up in a video, in a transmission. <laughs>